Welcome to Dylan with Age of Wonders 4, where we continue the journey of Breakgear and the Anointed Orcs in Episode 4. Let's begin. We want to probably draw them into this little choke point right here. Our Inferno puppy is quite hurt. It would be a good idea to get him a restore. Uh, there's no chance of getting hit by them, so let's bring our Fury over. Let's bring our Inferno Puppy right here. Let's put our Anvil Guard in the front. They can't reach us, right? Correct. Let's face him this direction. Bring our Harbadir right here. Our Arbalist, we will stand... What's the range on this? Four. Good, good, good. Our Arbalist we'll put right here. And our Steel Shaper will have them step behind. Cast a Restore on the Inferno Puppy. And these guys all do basic physical damage, which means that defense is going to be what's necessary. So they're going to probably target our weaker units. Which in this case is actually going to be the Inferno Puppy. So I want to give the Inferno Puppy more defense. I have called it an expendable unit, and it is basically expendable, but if you don't have to lose a unit, why lose a unit? There's nothing left to do here, so we're going to end the turn, and that'll put all of our units into defensive mode. They're advancing slowly and carefully. We could push into them, but I think the best thing to do is just to relax and let them come to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have the overdraw crossbow ability, which is very nice. Do we want to cast bolstering chant? I think in this case it would be a good idea to put it on the anvil guard. Although the chances of them targeting the anvil guard is quite low. Mm -hmm. No, we'll put it on the anvil guard. That'll give him even more defense. So when he does get hit, and he is almost certainly going to get hit, this pikeman is probably going to target the halberdier. This pikeman will probably target the anvil guard simply because he won't be able to hit the halberdier. And the pursuer is most likely going to try to shoot the inferno puppy. That is my guess. Although he could shoot the fury. Let's have you step right here. And we will go ahead and end our turn, put everybody into defensive mode. Inferno puppy shot. No, how about here? Hmm. Alrighty, he resisted that weaken. The dark culture likes to give debuffs to their enemies, which is usually weaken, which lowers your attack, I believe. Anvil Guard took a lot of hits, but Anvil Guard is made for taking a lot of hits. Let's see here. I want to taunt with the Anvil Guard if either of these two units stays alive. You're in range of this unit. You can blow him away, but we need a better shot. So let's step forward by two. Let's start wasting him. Good deal, good deal. I think the halberdier could probably use some more defense. Let's see if we can't shoot this guy repeatedly. He could hit our fury. So I want to kill one of them. That's my main focus, is to kill one of these, taunt the other one, and then damage the pursuer in the back. So let's focus on this one. Looks like it's very unlikely I'm going to be able to kill either of these units, truly. So let's damage the Pursuer in the back. You taunted, taunted, uncontrollable, always attack. Let's go ahead and let's taunt this unit. There's a 90% chance of that working. He's taunted, 
he got shield wall. So now when the Halberdier attacks the Night Guard, he's going to have extra defense. He has 9 defense at this point in time. He has 61% physical damage reduction, which is very nice. He responds, but we have Rune Retaliation, which means that he takes even more damage even if he responds. The Inferno Puppy, I think I would like to run him around the side to get behind them next turn. That's all of our units moved. Would we like to do a bolstering chant? I think that it might be a good idea to bolstering chant the Fury. Because the Fury is probably about to get hit. So I'm going to do that. Halberdier can take it. Anvil Guard can take it. Fury cannot take it nearly as much. Good, good. They're continuing to attack us because they're taunted. We are responding multiple times. Now the question is... Oh, he's blocked in so it looks like that Night Guard would definitely attack the Anvil Guard. Yep. Good deal. The Anvil Guard is made for getting punished. Alright, so the, the Fury can completely wipe out that Pursuer. Or, better yet, we can wipe out this Night Guard. Or miss! Twice! Okay. Alright. Let's get a rear shot on the night guard. He's flanked. Good deal. So it's extra damage. He has one retaliation strike right here, so what I would like to do is I'd like to overdraw a crossbow him. But he has charge resistance, doesn't he? Yes. So usually if we overdraw a crossbow somebody with the crossbow. They remove the retaliation attack, but he has charge resistance, so that doesn't really matter in this case. However, it does do more damage, so that is a good reason to go ahead and shoot him anyway. So 22 on average, 15 on average. Here we go. Good deal, good deal. Let's try to finish with the Steel Shaper. Let's push the Halberdier to kill the Pursuer. Right, we should be able to finish with the Anvil Guard here in a second. After a strike from our hero, and here we go. Nice building blocking our view. Mission accomplished. We cleared the infestation. We got some production, some mana, a mace of smiting, a heavy crossbow, and a nightmare. We can't give our hero this mount because we're using the Staff of Spirit. So the mace of smiting deals plus four spirit damage to fiends and undead. It has a base 14 physical damage. You can strike multiple times with it. The heavy crossbow allows us to just shoot the crossbow or quick stab. Eh. Neither of these things are very impressive, but the Nightmare Mount would be nice if we were able to use it because it gives Intimidation, I believe. Intimidating Aura, or something like that. So we've killed the Western forces. I want to bring my hero back to the east and start moving him south to build a city down here because he can only build cities by first building an outpost, which requires a hero in the province and then you upgrade that outpost into a city. So let's begin moving towards the east, bringing our forces back home so they can heal on the way and consolidate. You sir need some movement orders. I would like to actually prospect immediately I believe. Yeah. In consideration of that let's pull back to these mountains and start prospecting. I could get a hero award. Hey, hey, hey. 
Evoker's Robes. This is pretty good. So Evoker's Robes give plus one resistance and magic attacks deal plus 20% damage. Very nice. Very nice. Orders required by our Lesser Tide Spirit. Let's send you to the west. Have you scout the south a little bit like we planned to. Our pioneer right here could we can scout this right pro no 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 we can't we can't prospect that but we can prospect this one so I'm not worried about losing the chests so let's step right here if I step here then I can get the chest next turn and move into the province right here to prospect it let's see what we get hey a lucky rat Plus 5% critical ch hit chance. Awesome. Something I'd rather give to a unit that does more damage. Our hero tends to focus on supporting our other units, but hey, I won't turn down critical hit chance. I have a feeling that there's a player over here. I do want to meet them and see who they are. So let's move in that direction. I think there's two cities up here actually. I'm not concerned. A hostile free city. Oh, so we met independence that can be vassalized, integrated, or conquered. All right. So this is a hostile free city. They start at war with us. They're not happy with us. Duke Nashton Salvatus of the free city Hartfield greets you with hostility. We mole lords of Hartfield will fight for our freedom and stand against anyone who threatens our free city, even when they are led by an earth shaper like you. The blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. You are at war with Hartfield. Okay. Alright. So this haunted graveyard has a... Very... Well, not very strong, but pretty strong stack guarding it. I'm not worried about them attacking my scout because they're protecting the infestation. If the infestation was awake, I would be more worried about it. What I am worried about is this free city attacking our scout, so I will not get too close to that free city. I will instead send the scout more southeast over here to find what is probably another player. Unless, no, that farm is with them, most likely. But we'll send them southeast because I want to search more in a circle around our city to find other people. So this haunted graveyard says... The dead often grow restless in troubled times, in places like graveyards where they are all conveniently amassed in a single, sometimes less than final, resting place. This can be fatal for others. Whether driven by dark magic, a confluence of ambient spiritual energy, or some other source of ire from beyond the veil, hordes of the undead rise with one need to feast upon the flesh of the living. So now we're up to plus 19 mana, which is a pretty respectable amount. If I go ahead and start summoning a copper golem, I can show off basic summons. Or I could start working on getting enchantments for our units, Sundering Blades, which would lower enemy defense. I think I'd like to go ahead and... Oh, uh, the, oh man, the 8 mana per unit. We still don't have that much mana. Mm, I think it'll be better to do Sundering Blades. Let's go ahead and start that. And that'll end our turn. Let's move on. Who is this? Blint. Allow me to introduce myself. I am First Protector Blint, the Underdelver of the Deep Dwellers. Let us hope this realm is big enough for all of us. So these are mole people. We have neutral relations at the moment. We're not sure how we feel about each other, but he does have Materium Infinity, and because he has Materium Infinity, affinity, we should be more likely to be friends with each other. So I'm going to send him a welcome gift at first, and we'll see how things go from there. I will accept this gesture of goodwill, break your steel shatterer. Thank you. So he's coming from the south. He probably came, since he's an underdweller, from this underground passage right here. So I'd really like to get a city put down here as soon as I can, or at least an outpost to make it less likely for him to take the land. You have claims around your cities, which give you grievances against other leaders, which 
lets you able to declare war on them or sell the grievances. We'll talk about that later. So Blint is also a industrialistic society. So they do have pioneers which can prospect our provinces. And each province can only be prospected once. That's by any faction or civilization. So we've got some competition, unfortunately. Although we might also have a friend. We'll find out later. This scout, I need to stay away from the city, so I need to get him further south. So let's go ahead and let's do that. This scout was going to grab this chest first. Let's see how much gold we get. Oh, we didn't get a gold. We got Demoralizing Mask. Melee attackers have a base 60% chance of gaining Despair. And Despair makes them use minus 5 morale at the end of the turn. Uh, melee attackers. The chances of him being attacked in melee is very low, but we'll go ahead and we'll give him the mask temporarily. We may raise up another hero that's a melee unit eventually. It's actually a pretty good idea to raise up different types of heroes because you get different types of hero rewards. Sweet, we got some production. I always love production. We just built an arbalist. Let's not worry about that quite yet. Let's send our hero further southeast. Let's merge the fury into the main stack. Let's move the inferno puppy further to the south. Just to the edge of our territory down here. Merge him up with the arbalist. And send the lesser tide spirit further to the south. Unfortunately that mole man being there forced me to go around him. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Inferno puppy, you're gonna wait. Western scout, you will prospect this next province up here. So you can get to the underground through these underground passages, which we'll be doing eventually. Not immediately, but eventually. Another production stash. There's a lot of good stuff to be gained over here. This is really one of the powers of the industrial civilization. Wand of Poison Darts. So this is a single magical attack at target unit, based 90% chance of inflicting poisoned. So it does 20 blight damage. It can do poisoned, which gives 8 blight damage each turn, but does not affect ethereal or undead units. It's always good to have some options. Ooh, I could give him the Wand of Lightning Strike. Mm, but we gotta be close to the enemy to do that, so let's go with the Poison Darts instead. I could give him this, this anyway. So let's go ahead and let's give him both, just so he has some options. Having options is never, ever a bad thing. Our city produced that Stone Mason, so we have even more production. We could boost the population again, but I think I want to save and build a city down here in the south before I do anything else. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to build the library next, I believe. We could do a vendor, or we could start on upgrading our city's main structure, the town hall. The town hall is the industrious way of upgrading your city so that you can build higher tier units such as steel shapers, halberdiers, taverns, and wizard towers. Let's see, let's see. Let's build the library first to get some more knowledge income. So that was built instantly because we had production saved up. In this game you don't need to have a queue of production. It does save up in a stash and gets used as needed. So it's very nice, you don't lose production if you don't have a queue. It's a very, very good. After that, I'm kind of thinking that we need to upgrade the city itself. Because our city stability is getting kind of low. Once it starts dropping below zero, we're going to start getting some negatives. Well, below negative ten, we'll start getting less city income, which is going to impact our gold and mana. So getting the bulwark will allow us to build the tavern and give us access to our tier 2 units. So I think that is what I'm going to do next. I could almost hurry that production, but I'm not too worried about it. I, I'm almost leaning towards getting...
I hope you enjoyed Age of Wonders 4 following Gear and I as we lead the anointed orcs into the future. If you like this video, why not give it a like, and if you want to see more, you can always subscribe. Feel free to let me know how the video went or what you thought of my moves in the comments below. I'll see you later in episode 6.